The red giant star of Arcturus is very much an analogue of a future version of our own beautiful sun. One of the oldest stars in our immediate vicinity, its red magnificence mesmerises many of us in the northern hemisphere. Hi everyone, Vega here, and in today's video we return to normal service with a further look at our friendly neighbourhood red giant star, Arcturus. So, let's get to it. Currently in the latter stages of its stellar evolution, Arcturus is classified as a red giant star. This means it has exhausted the hydrogen fuel in its core and has expanded significantly. Red giant stars like Arcturus are typically at a stage where they are burning helium in their cores and undergoing complex processes that eventually leads to their demise. Not dead yet though, the star continues evolving and indeed, in the coming millions of years it will transform from a red giant, shedding its outer layers of gas and dust into space to create a shell of material around the core. And yes, this expelled material may contribute to the formation of new stars and planetary systems. As many watching this video already know, the ultimate fate of Arcturus is to become a white dwarf. After it has shed its outer layers, the core that remains will collapse until electron degeneracy stops the star from further collapse under its own gravity. Basically, and very briefly, electron degeneracy occurs in incredibly dense environments, like stellar cores or white dwarfs. It arises from the Pauli exclusion principle, which forbids identical fermions, such as electrons, from sharing the same quantum space. Pressure driven by this principle counters gravitational collapse and stabilises objects like white dwarfs. As you may imagine, it plays a crucial role in determining the final fate of stars, preventing further collapse in less massive stars like Arcturus. The easiest way to spot Arcturus is by following the curve of the handle of the Big Dipper, but frankly these days it's easier to use apps on your mobile phone that can directly point you in the direction of any star you choose. As a side note, I recently started using one myself, and apart from identifying stars like Antares or Fummerholt, which is now possible for me living in Spain, I also seem to enjoy looking at the Southern Hemisphere stars like Mimosa, Alpha Centauri or Acrox, albeit through my floor. Anyway, joking aside, although Sirius is visible from parts of the Northern Hemisphere's winter, Arcturus technically is actually the brightest star in the Northern Celestial Hemisphere. Located relatively close at 36.7 light-years from the Sun, it has a spectral type of K1.53 and indeed is an ageing star of around 7.1 billion years of age. One of the more strange characteristics about Arcturus is that it is about the same mass as the Sun, but because it has expanded 25 times its size, it is now around 170 times more luminous and it offers a glimpse at the future of our own system. As we like to discuss on this channel, however, in the past the progenitor star of Arcturus was unsurprisingly likely a G-type main sequence star similar to the Sun, albeit with a mass perhaps in the range of 1 to 1.5 times the mass of the Sun. The exact mass may vary, but it would have been within this general range, and possibly, like Alpha Centauri A or Rigel Contorus, as Arcturus would have lost mass over the eons of time of its existence due to stellar winds. Known, of course, as Alpha Boaltes, the name of the constellation itself comes from Latin, Boates, which translates as herdsman or plowman. It certainly has a strange and difficult pronunciation, Boates. Perhaps give it a try yourself. Going back to the star though, interestingly, in order of redness, Arcturus fits nicely into a table of famous stars. In something like this order of increasing redness, we see Pollux that has a BV colour index of 1, Arcturus itself with 1.23, Aldebaran at 1.54, and most red of all is Betelgeuse at 1.85. Indeed, the star is actually moving rapidly, 122 kilometers a second, in fact, relative to the Sun, and is more or less now at its closest approach. Perihelion, this closest approach, is predicted in about 4,000 years from now, where the star will be a few one hundredths of a light year closer to Earth than it is today, and so indeed it ever so slightly brighter, although not enough to make any obvious difference to the naked eye. With no confirmed companions so far, Arcturus is currently alone, but many think there is certainly something big in its vicinity. Some believe there's a dim, faint star-like companion, perhaps 20 times dimmer than the parent star, whereas others have put forward the theory that there may be a substellar object, nearly 12 times the mass of Jupiter. The object is thought to be located roughly at the same distance of orbit from Arcturus as the Earth is from the Sun, at 1.1 astronomical units. Authors have, however, concluded that the variation is likely to be intrinsic to the star, rather than due to a gravitational effect of a companion. 
the fourth brightest star in the night sky per se. Interestingly, however, Arcturus is actually brighter individually than either of the Alpha Centauri stars from Earth. It's only the combined apparent magnitude of Alpha Centauri that makes them brighter than Arcturus. It seems that two heads are brighter than one, or at least in the case of Alpha Centauri. Finally, once Arcturus exhausts its helium supply, its outer layers will likely bleed off, leaving behind that red dwarf remnant. But the question is, how long will this take? With Arcturus' estimated mass of about 1.1 to 1.2 times that of the Sun, a rough guess says that the star likely has a remaining lifespan of a few hundred million years left, before it finally exhausts all that nuclear fuel and becomes a white dwarf. The transition from a red dwarf to a red dwarf itself takes quite a while though as well, as it sheds its outer layers into a planetary nebula. The process typically is thought to take tens of thousands to perhaps a few hundred thousand years. In essence, while Arcturus is relatively close to the end of its life, compared to younger stars like the Sun, it still has several hundred million years left before it comes a white dwarf. In today's final graphic, we imagine if Arcturus were to suddenly approximate our solar system and appear in the sky, somewhere in the vicinity of Alpha Centauri, at around 4.3 light years distance. We see the Alpha Centauri stars shining beautifully at minus 0.27 apparent magnitudes, which is the third brightest star in the night sky. But now we see Arcturus reappearing, and astonishingly, we see the star now shining at some minus 5.2 apparent magnitudes, again at the distance of Alpha Centauri, which is substantially brighter than the planet Venus, 75% brighter in fact. At 4.34 light years, Arcturus would be a phenomenal star, although let's be honest, at its current distance of 36.7 light years, it's already fantastic enough, isn't it? Arcturus is a beautiful red giant star in our local vicinity, a future analogue of our sun. It's the third brightest individual star in our night sky, redder than Pollux, but oranger than Betelgeuse. Arcturus will eventually fade over the next few tens to hundreds of millions of years to end its life cycle as a white dwarf star. If it were at the distance of Alpha Centauri, Arcturus would outshine everything bar the moon and the sun, and indeed the remnants of Arcturus may yet give life to future star and planetary systems. It seems this beautiful red star will live on, one way or another. Thanks for watching and consider subscribing if you haven't already. If you would like to support the channel further, you could consider buying me a coffee and I'll link this in the description. Thanks to those of you who have already done so, and if you have any videos or subjects you'd like to see brought to life, don't forget to let me know in the comments below, and perhaps next week your idea could show up. Take really good care of yourselves, look after your friends and family well, and I'll see you on the next one.